Hello, Interwebs! I'm Eric. And I'm Looney. And welcome to the Looney Turtle. Recently, My Little Pony A New Generation was released on Netflix, and I gotta say, I loved it. The animation was beautiful, the songs were different, in a good way, and it looks like the creators have sculpted an interesting world for us to explore in the season to come. That said, there has been something nagging at me since this movie was announced. How is this Equestria? Oh, that doesn't matter. I disagree. The creators of this movie could have created a new world for Generation 5, but they chose to set it in the same world as Generation 4. Doesn't that at least make you question why? No, because it doesn't matter. I like the characters and the show. You're just trying to ruin it for me with all these pointless questions. And that's where you're wrong. One of the things that makes or breaks any good story is its world. Amphibia has multiple cities surrounding Wartwood. Owl House has the entire entirety of the Boiling Isles. Infinity Train has an infinite number of train cars. These characters are having adventures, which is fun to follow, but these stories don't happen in a vacuum. They take place in worlds that, in some ways, are their own characters. So, like any good character, when you decide to include them in your story, it works best when you respect the history that comes along with it. And that's where I'm confused, because again, they didn't have to set this series in the same world as Generation 4, but they did. So why did they strip away seemingly every everything that Twilight and her friends created. Not only have the ponies divided based on race, not only are the dragons or the yaks or the sea ponies or the crystal ponies or all of the other races no longer in Equestria, but apparently the entire continent has split in half to accommodate Maritime Bay, the Tree of Harmony, and Canterlot Mountain. Seriously, they're using this many moons time frame to hand wave literally every question someone may have. If all of this is true, then there's absolutely no point to connecting these ponies to Generation 4 outside of recognizability. And that's just a cheap marketing tactic. So I'm going to go off of the assumption, the blind hope, that these writers aren't throwing everything in the trash just to tell their own story. So using that assumption, what is Equestria? Well, the ponies in Maritime Bay appear to use it to refer to the place they're in, while the main six seem to use it in reference to the kingdom they reside in. So a possible way to think of Equestria might be Asgard. Wait, what? Not literally, but metaphorically. In Thor Ragnarok, Odin and Thor have a small dialogue about who Thor is and how he can face the destruction of Asgard. When faced with the reality that Asgard must fall, Odin tells Thor that Asgard is not a place. Never was. Asgard is where our people stand. In that respect, I think that the Kingdom of Equestria is where the Equestrians, specifically ponies, reside. And as any good fan should know, this isn't the only place Equestrians have called home. In Heartswarming Eve, we were able to see a play that explained the founding of Equestria in great detail, and I think that Maritime Bay, Zephyr Heights, and Bridalwood are the tribes we never saw in the original series. What? But I thought they all moved to found Equestria. Yes, and to that end, we know that Princess Platinum, Commander Hurricane, and Chancellor Crotinghead decided to move to Equestria to escape the Wendigos. But just because their leaders move, doesn't mean that all of the ponies moved with them. It's actually possible that when the leaders moved to found the Kingdom of Equestria, they took the Wendigos with them, in turn making it so the original settlements never had to work together. I mean, the Kingdom's new alicorns controlling the day and night cycle, and big pockets of the world where weather controlled itself, there was no longer an incentive for the original tribes to work together. So it kind of makes sense that they just didn't. So with Equestria developing and thriving with the magic of friendship on their side, the ponies of the original three tribes stayed separate and started relying on technology to the point where they lost any form of magic. And with Equestria so focused on growing and changing, they may have forgotten about the original tribes. But how do they know about the Guardians of Friendship? Well, they obviously learned about G4 somehow, but I've been trying to figure out where. You see, on the map of Equestria for Generation 4, there's a place called the Undiscovered West, and that's got a faint path and mountains. So that seems like the best place for G5 to take place, because we could have Zephyr Heights, Bridalwood, and Maritime Bay in that direction, explaining why there's a big travel station to Zephyr Heights and not the other settlements. But that station actually puts a wrench in this theory, because two of the locations in the departures can faintly be read as Manhattan and Niagara, which are nowhere near the Undiscovered West, meaning that G5 is either into the unknown or past the Bugbear territory. But wouldn't that mean that Zephyr Heights is closer to Equestria then? Yes. How does that work? Wouldn't Maritime Bay be closer? If we were on a flat map, but for globes, we usually put the North Pole on the top of the map. And poles are generally cold, so if we assume that this is the pole, then we need to flip the G5 map over so that the North Poles are facing each other. 
Think of it like how Russia is technically north of Greenland. On a flat map, that isn't clear, but on a globe, it's clear as day. Beyond that, the official map of G4 Equestria has a zeppelin in that area, so it could be acting as a super subtle easter egg. But if they haven't been connected in generations, then why are Twilight's cutie marks everywhere? And how do they have paintings of Star Swirl, or how do they know about the Guardians of Friendship? Well, it's clear that these ponies were visited by Twilight, and that could have been caused by Star Swirl. I mean, he was Clover the Clever's teacher, who I will remind you was Princess Platinum's advisor in the migration to Equestria, which means that Star Swirl existed at the foundation of the Kingdom of Equestria as well. So it's more than possible that he became curious in his old age. Realizing that modern day Equestria didn't have any information on his home, he could have traveled there with Twilight where they discover the crystals and help these ponies restore some ancient magic. Then with the clear racism still in place and their lack of a need for magic, these gems could just fall apart and the ponies could just go back to life as usual, not liking each other and thriving in their own way. But why did they stop interacting with Equestria? It's hard to change people, so maybe they just didn't want to be bothered, kind of like the Amish. But this tweet kind of gives me an idea of where the crystals came from. Wait, what? If this is the Tree of Harmony, then how is this not G4 Equestria? Because Sunny's map shows the ocean at the bottom, which doesn't make sense with G4 Equestria. So I think that it's a different Tree of Harmony. But I thought that there was just the one. And that's where I think we've been misled. In Shadow Play, when Star Swirl explains the pillars and the creation of the Tree of Harmony, he only ever referred to it as a seed that they put their magic into and left behind. So they didn't make the seed. Exactly. Just like the main six didn't make this treehouse. They definitely played a role in its creation, but the Tree of Harmony gave them a seed to grow that castle. So what if this was the original Tree of Harmony, from which Star Swirl and the Pillars got a seed and planted it deep in the Everfree Forest? It would explain why G5 has a Tree of Harmony, as well as potentially where these gems came from. It wasn't just a set of random gems, it was a gift from the tree that they squandered. The tree relies on harmony to keep its magic, so with a lack of it in this part of the world, it reverts to a simple tree and its gems lose their power. Well that's certainly interesting, but what if you're wrong? Then I'll no doubt be disappointed. I like the idea of building upon a world that's been established, rather than breaking it to fit the story the writers want to tell. If this movie is anything to go by, then they want to tell more adventurous stories, which I'm all for. But I don't know how hooked I'll be if these adventures are in the hollowed out corpse of a world I've spent 10 years exploring. Hey, Editing Eric here. Uh, and disappointed I kind of am with the current direction of the Netflix series and the YouTube series. Uh, it just doesn't quite live up to the expectations writing-wise that I had going into Generation 5. Uh, the movie itself set up a lot of mysteries, gave us a, a good direction to go in, and I don't feel it's being very well utilized. Uh, that said, uh, the comic book series seems to be taking an interesting route, and I will be keeping up with that. Um, so for anyone who's in the comments saying, oh, you didn't see this or that or this or that, I, I am aware uh, this video was written and recorded and made to be published uh, before any of those were released. So... Um, as much as I, I could have just scrapped it, I had gotten too far into the editing process to uh, just completely scrap it. It felt wrong to scrap it. I could at least get the idea out there. Um, so with that said, uh, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see all of you in the next video.